please join me in welcoming Myhala Harold, Maria Bakalova, Chase Sweet Wonders, Rachel Sennett, and Director Helena Rain, and our moderator, KCRW DJ, Tyler Boudreau. Now I know I've done it. Queen. <laughs> Welcome to Summer Night Cinema, a summer event series brought to you by KCRW, the Hammer Museum, and the UCLA Film and Television Archive. Today we welcome the director of Bodies, 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 Helena Rain, and cast members Maria Bakalova, Chase Sui Wonders, Rachel Sennett, and Myhala Harold. Give it up, y'all. Also, I'm KCRW DJ and culture producer, Tyler Boudreaux, and this is the Q&A. Let's get into it. So, Helena, I read that you actually played a game with your friends, very similar to Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Yes, when I first received uh, the first ver version of the script that existed, I was very intrigued because I have a very tight friend group and we always used to play, we call it Mordenaertje in my language, which means murderer or werewolf or, or mafia, and it would always be total terror. Everybody would cry, it would be horrible. And then, <laughs> and it was total psychological warfare. And then two weeks later, we'd be like, ah, let's play it again. <laughs> So what about that experience like inspired your direction for this film? I think for me the film is about group behavior and and are we animals or are we civilized? That's basically my main question with this film. Right. And um, any of the cast, have you ever played this game or something similar? We can kind of go down. Yeah, we played it. We played it as like an icebreaker, which was oh. probably the most aggressive icebreaker with a group of strangers. That's interesting. <laughs> is, uh, Tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, with actors, you really see like who is who. Can, <laughs> actors are masters of manipulation. So <laughs> to be play that game where it's like a test of who can lie the best is like mm -hmm. a real. Um, I feel like that immediately like dropped us into the world. Right. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because you were the murderer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it was also my one. <laughs> but you never guessed that I was the murderer. No, no. everyone thought it was me. <laughs> That's my bad. I was kind of bullying you a little bit. I was convinced it was you. Everyone thought, and then I kept being like, it's not me, it's not me. That makes it and seem like it's yeah. you more. And Maria was silent the entire time. <laughs> silent. It's always the silent one, so I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So I have to say that watching this film as a millennial, it was even more disturbing because it kind of felt relatable. <laughs> and it felt like, you know, I could have gone to college with this group of friends. And watching these characters react to the absence of social media and thinking about how much we rely on our phones as this buffer to reality or to feel like comforted and connected with each other. Um, I really want to ask you all, like, I'm curious if there was any aspect of your character or the group or the situation that you specifically related to. Yes, I mean, I, I would love to believe that if I were caught in that situation, I would be the Jordan and be like, okay, how do we protect us? How do we find the source of whatever? I probably wouldn't be going towards it. I would probably figure out a way to like barricade, right. but I'm definitely a doer. So in that sense, I think I'm quite like Jordan. Um, yeah. Yeah, what about you, Rachel? We can go that way. Oh, I was just going to say I would drink. Um, <laughs> I, I, there was times where I was like drinking in the middle of it, and I was thinking, and I was like, I would totally drink yeah. if I was there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you would escape. You would need to escape this, that situation. I feel like the, 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 the film is like, this like posh kind of like prison I, is I feel like a fun way to like 
a, like large picture to view it. And I think like the fact that there's there's this hurricane that comes in and all our phones go away, this like extension of our body that literally like you know is is malfunctioning. All of a sudden we have to like confront ourselves. And I think there is something like I don't know like, if everyone's anyone's ever been like camping or in the woods and like suddenly you haven't had service for like seven hours. Like there's something like as much as we hate to admit it, there's you have to like confront yourself a little bit. And I think this is like you know the way it goes most awry. In, in this in this movie, so that that's very relatable to me. Yeah. What about you, Maria? I don't think I would have behaved the same way that my character is behaving. <laughs> 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 no, will I try to save somebody that I love? Absolutely. Will I try to I don't know sacrifice my life to save them? Yeah. Um, will I dare to like do something like that? No. Um, <laughs> But maybe I'll join Rachel's club, I'll get a drink, <laughs> I will try my best to bring everybody together and lock ourselves in a room and just spend the night and do a moment that is like bright outside and we can start walking. Um, maybe that's what I would have done. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Alina, was there a particular aspect of the film that you related to or did it relate to your like perception of Gen Z? I mean, yes, I think. I mean, we created it, so yes, of yeah. course. And to me, all the characters are parts of myself, I feel, and sides of my own character. So yeah, we, we did a game actually once we went to dinner. We were like, who are you in the film? Uh, but I think I see myself in all of them. And of course, Sarah Delap, who uh, you know wrote the script, so she's a playwright, she also put a lot of herself uh, in it. So there's a lot of very personal things in this film. And Helena, I read that you asked the cast to learn their lines like they were rehearsing for a play. And I feel like that fact, along with the film being shot in one location, really contributed to it feeling like a stage production. Um, can you just tell us what it was like directing that group dynamic? Well, it was heaven because they are <laughs> so talented. And, and it was such a joy to, to just be in their presence and work with them. And also I'm 46, so I better collaborate with them because it's a film about their age, you know? So I really had to really work together with them and they were amazing. So I come from the stage myself. I used to be a stage actress, so that's all I know. So I, I literally wouldn't know how to do it in another way, but I did tell them like, that's how I would like to work. And a lot of them have stage experience. So I think everybody loved it. And we did really long takes. So it wasn't that technical, you know, we really tried to make it like thrilling and fun and scary and, and not just, oh, now the close up is on you and we're all just gonna go to sleep. You know, we all had to be like alert at all times. And that's very exciting. And it also has to do with our DP, who's also from Holland, Jasper Wolf, and he, shot also a film called Monos. I don't know if people might have seen that. And there you see how wild and crazy he is, you know, jumping in the waterfall with the actors and stuff like that. And so I think we, we also experienced some of that together. Let's talk about those long takes because there are some moments it felt like you were just pulling the audience into these raw emotions and there was so much going on. And um, I'm curious to hear each of your perspective, kind of these really intense, moments in this film like how was it playing off of that energy just in real time when the cameras were rolling I think I too come from a stage background um so when I see like a 13 pager which we had one of those towards the end I get super excited because um you know when the camera stops and you sort of take a break you can waver and and how you're in it but when you have you know, whatever it is, a 20 minute scene with four or five other actors and there's guns and blood and someone outside and a hurricane, all of that is like, you have to, you have no choice but to commit. And after a while you get into a groove with each other and because we all get along so well and we did prepare as if it were a play, it gives you so much freedom because once you go, you go. And Jasper was like another character in that because a lot of the time those single takes we're just a roaming master. And we would just get, say, okay, do it again, and we're gonna catch someone else and see what happens. And he was really playful in that way. But I sort of felt like I got lost in it. And I don't know if anyone else can relate to that, but you, it starts to feel real the longer you go. Um, so yeah, we were all exhausted by the end of it, but that's cool because our characters were also exhausted and it like energizes it in um, a twisted way. 
Yeah, I feel like especially that the party scene that, that we, where we're all just kind of like raging and dancing, because we did that, we had like a nine hour party. It, 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 each time, like when you're dropped into a nine hour party, like it's it's bound, like different dynamics are bound to happen. Like weird love triangles that had like, were kind of nowhere in the script all of a sudden started <laughs> popping out like, like boils like after nine hours. So that part's really cool. Like all of a sudden like, backstory comes about um, just throughout the course of a day because of that play-like structure. I feel like the longer the take, the better the take was in our case. Because, yeah, Helena is theatrically trained, Mahal is theatrically trained, I'm coming from theater myself, and we just enjoyed it a lot. And Jesper, as everybody admit, is incredible. He's just following you out there and catches things that you will never guess that you'll do. Right. Rachel, was there like a moment you felt kind of lost in the scene or in the moment? Well, I just remember the first time we did a long take, like the first day where it was like when Maria's character comes into the room and we're all doing the TikTok. And like in the script, it's like they do a TikTok, just like she walks in. And then we're just doing it. I mean, no, 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 it was more descriptive, but do you know what I mean? It's like a little. No, no, but you're oh, right. You're Sarah, right. You're right. I love you. And it's, but it's a, it's like a line. It's like a very, it's a quick scene. It's one of our first days. And Bria comes in and we all just start talking and then we're like, drink the margarita, we're all bullying her. And it just kept going and I was like, like, how many side eyes can you throw, Maria? Like, yeah, she comes a lot. It, it kind of, it, 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 it like almost like felt like it was like, I, I there was like a part in my head where I was like, oh, did, we got it, right? And then I like let it go and we just kept going and it was very like freeing. And then I was like, oh my God. And that was the first day. So I think. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, no, yes. there, was there was definitely a moment. I remember after that day where we were like, like between takes, we were like, so the, so the camera doesn't doesn't stop. Yeah. Like, we're like, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. Yeah. So, Helena, you were loving all of that, yeah. right? Just <laughs> behind the camera, like, stay on them. Like. Yeah. It's just my way. I, 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 it's only my second film, so what do I know? But I sort of discovered that with my first film, that if you just don't say stop, the most interesting things happen, you know, <laughs> and and especially with this because again I'm old, so uh, I I'm I'm looking for what whatever is authentic between them, and because they're all so good in improvisation, it's just so beautiful to watch them. And it, sometimes I could just literally not get enough, right. like the, with the dancing, it, uh, we literally sort of locked them into the room with Jasper. And we, so, we, we did go through the story, we sort of knew what we were gonna do, but I really enjoyed to give them a lot of freedom because we prepared so well, you, you were able to do that and trust the process, and I absolutely adored it. The editor, not so much, he was like, wait, what is happening here? <laughs> Um, so I loved how the film had elements of comedy. There were times where everyone was laughing, and then there were times when people were like genuinely like, oh no, like, you know? <laughs> and um, the slasher and the thriller parts were so, so exhilarating, and it also felt like a parallel of reality where, you know, Gen Z is growing up doing TikTok dances while this disaster is kind of looming in the background. Um, so, so Helena, like, how did you approach this delicate balance between humor and thriller? Well, that's of course, and we all were very aware of that when we started the biggest challenge of this film, and that that succeeds, or let, let's hope that that's what it does, um, is is hopefully due to our qualities and talent, but it's also a lot of coincidences. I believe with any work of art. It just is a build-up of so many different elements. But yeah, we really searched for that tone and I felt I was so worried about it because I thought, if you make a joke, the tension goes, right? So then you need to build up the tension and how do I keep all of that balance? And you also want some uh, you know, emotional impact as well and da, da, da. So I was so worried and then we had the first table read and I just knew it was gonna be great. <laughs> Because they were all so good. And I was literally laughing my ass off already at the table read, and I thought, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. And I, and then we just really prepared all of us really, really well. They were always rehearsing their lines, even at night in the horrible motel where we slept. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, I feel, you know, we just all dived into it, and, and we accomplished this tone. I mean, if you like it or not, but I'm yeah. very proud of it. <laughs> yeah, you should be. This is a great film. This is so good. Yeah. Give it up, definitely.
<clears throat> my last question before I want to open it up to the audience um, is the social dynamics. Where there were so many, there was privilege, you know, there was toxic friendships, shallow friendships, um, even maintaining friendships through group chats, which is something <laughs> I was talking about with a colleague, and she was like, "Yeah, that's I don't know about that." <laughs> and I was just like, "I agree." So relatable. <laughs> so relatable. Yeah, drama goes down in the group chat, um, but. You know, I would say, like, Maria, your character kind of went through the biggest test because you didn't have any of this background. And so what did you, like, was there a creative process um, that you kind of used to, to tap into those raw emotions when, like, shit really hit the fan? Well, it's very interesting because I usually um, try to find things that are similar between me and the character that I'm playing. And the character that I'm playing right now, not right now, like <laughs> last year, um, while well, we're shooting bodies, bodies, bodies. Um, it's pretty close and not communicative at all. And she's trying to be somebody else to try to fit the group she meets. And she fails, of course, because she is not honest. Um, but it was very interesting to develop a relationship with, I don't know, with this imaginary life that she creates because it's built on light. And Helena helped me a lot to try to, I don't know, believe that I can be the outsider that will, I don't know, as I said at the beginning, try to sacrifice her life at the same time, keep all these lies and secrets hidden, which are also a reason why she is one of the suspects of the murderers. Um, but when you have a director who knows how to guide you and make you believe that you can go further, uh, especially in the weather that we were shooting because it was, Jesus Christ, so cold and scary and just Somehow the sound of these machines, rain machines, wind machines, woo, which was like, we're going to a war right now. It was scary. I was waking up and I was like, am I, am I still dreaming? Is something bad about to happen? Did it happen last <laughs> night? Uh, and it was, it was just the set. Um, but it was, it was interesting. And I think the similarities between me and my character B is that we're both coming from a different place. We're both coming from a life that is not privileged. And I personally like to look at projects, theatrical plays or films that are following the story of the outsider, like for example, Wicked. Um, so having the chance to play a character like B has been an honor. Right, awesome, well, thank you all. Let's open it up to, does anyone in the audience have a question? I think the ushers are coming around. Let's see. What was the funnest part, the most fun? Making new friends. I know that's corny, but honestly, like... True. We, yeah. we like each other, which I think is not always the case, and we really went through some shit. <laughs> so, you know, that, ki that, that bonds you, that trauma bonds you, and so, you know, it's nice. It, and then especially, like, we get to do things like this where we, we, we get to, we're excited to, like, come and talk about this film because we are proud of it, we're proud of each other, we're excited for people to be as excited about it as we are, and that's not always the case. Um, sometimes you hate the people you work with. Um, we do not, so that's a privilege. I think that was the most fun for me. I think it also makes a difference that like everyone, sometimes with, with young actors you know, who can be on the various degrees of jadedness or whatever, I think everyone was so committed and it was clear from the get-go like Helena said from the table read everyone was ready ready to drop right in and when you're like by day two you're covered in blood sweat and tears and have to cry on each other's shoulders like there's no choice but to like feel a sense of camaraderie and and it kind of mimics like a warlike situation we I mean <laughs> we did not go to war it's we didn't know such a thing but um it you know has echoes of that <laughs> Well, I was just going to say also, being able to sit in complete silence together, like so cold, wet, and just be like, <sighs> like I was like, trust you guys, trust you for life yeah. after that. <laughs> what about you, Maria? Yeah, well, I, I can only say that I completely agree with everything said until now. And to, to add a little bit more, because we're all the same age, and uh, it's an ensemble film, and it's usually kind of scary to, to try to find a balance and with this cast, I have to say that I felt like everybody supported each other from the beginning till the end. And if there is an option to like even 
bring something more to their performance right now, their take. They were doing it all the time. And I, it was just delightful to work and to create friendships and families because I believe that we as actors or artists, when we join a project, we spend quite a long time and we get to know people. And if you have the privilege to create a family, that's, that's the most satisfying part of it all. Because then it's post-production, then it's promotion, then it's like premiere <laughs> and you see these people. And it's nice to see people that you like. <laughs> Helena, the most par fun part for you? Oh, I think just the whole journey it was, for me, of course, coming to America, you know, it's such a, I mean, I live here now, I don't know what I'm doing, like, it's it changed my whole life, so it's, and just be witness to these, like, they feel like my children, even though I know that they're way, that they're not my children, but I, I've, I've that feels like that to me, so that's like, I'm just, everything is fun to me, and, and very challenging and tough, but at the same time, I cannot be more grateful. She's a fun mom. <laughs> All right, one more question. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Thank you all so much for being here. The film was such a joy. I really enjoyed it. Um, my question was, what, it, what was it like directing or acting in an A24 film? Um, because I feel like that studio has become very specific with the type of movies that they try to release. Um, so did that inform your practice as an actor, as a director? Um, what was it like working for that studio? I have one thing that I observed about working on an A24 film that I thought was genius is not only are they amazing in um, bringing together creatives who will bring this vision, but like everybody on the set, the crew, the people who fed us, everyone somehow came with the vibe. You know what I mean? Like they were all excited about the movie, whether or not they'd read the script, but it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to work and then, yeah. There's been occasions where I go and I'm like, oh, here's the actors and whatever, and sometimes the crew people like don't even talk to you or say anything, and this time around, I felt like they were all like, dedicated. you know what I mean? They were really yeah. dedicated and, and excited about what the film could be, and we were all kind of stuck on that island together out there in the woods. Um, so there was like full production camaraderie, um, and that I think A24 does really well. They build an entire production seamlessly. I think the essence for me is that they um, are capable to let the filmmaker have a lot of freedom and that you can actually, um, even though of course the company has to make money and there's commercial, uh, you know, you have to uh, make the money back, but at the same time they do give you creatively a lot of freedom. And if you ask for rehearsal time, they will try to do that. And if you ask, you know, so I think that is sort of their secret in a way. And, um, and and this, of course, are also really good in, even though this is also a dark film and a weird film, they can sell it, you know? And you see that with even more extreme films that they make that are considered art house, and yet they they, they find a way to bring, to bring them to an audience, and I think that's super rare and unique. Yeah, I, I was gonna just add, I, I think that like from the get-go, you could tell that we were totally clay, like in Helena's hands, and I think, uh, one thing about just knowing, you know, the brand and the cachet of A24, I think we all went into it being like, this is going to be genre bending and it, it, there's no clear, cut. this is not like a YA, you know, there's no clear cut category and A24 always breaks through molds and barriers. And so I think like knowing that and rising to that challenge of like, okay, let's try to make something unexpected. I think that was, that was cool. It was the dream. Honestly, it was the dream. I think for all of us. Yes. Rachel, did you have any? I was gonna say, yeah, I, w I agree with all of that. I feel like the freedom, to, the 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 mixture of genres, I think, is really cool, um, because then the whole time, you're kind of trying to find that balance, and you're never like comfortably settling into something, um, and I think that's really exciting. Well, thank you all for coming out to Summer Night Cinema. Thank you all for joining us and tonight. Thank you all thank for, 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 for coming. Thank you so much. And thank you to our partners.